it's Gina Mayo from Music in Our Homeschool, and today I am going to teach you a beginning music theory lesson. This will be the first lesson in my advanced music theory course, which will be part of the Fine Arts membership at learn.musicinourhomeschool.com. So you, I, what I recommend that you do is watch this lesson once through and then go back and watch it again. And the second time while you're watching it, use the printouts that you'll see below this video. And you'll see one that has a staff and one that has a piano keyboard. And also have a notebook where you can start writing down the terms and the different things that we talk about. But first, just watch it through, especially if you're new to music theory, so you can start to learn the very basics for this skill. So let's start at the beginning. Music is written on a staff. And you see that a staff has five lines and four spaces. And the way we count those is we start from the bottom and go up. So that's one, two, three, four, five lines and one, two, three, four spaces, counting from bottom up. So that is the staff. And then a staff is divided up into measures using bar lines. So the bar lines are straight down and that makes a measure. At the end of a piece of music you will see what's called a, a double bar line. If the very last one is really thick you know that it's the absolute end of the piece. If it's just two bar lines that are the same thickness then it's just the end of a section. On a staff, you will see what's called, at the beginning of the staff, you'll see a clef. Clef is spelled like this, C-L-E-F, and there are two main clefs that we use in music today. Those are the treble clef and the bass clef. There are other clefs that I will talk about in a future lesson, but for today, let's just start with treble and bass. The treble clef is used for higher pitches, the one notes up high, and the bass clef is used for lower pitches down here. And that's how it would be for any instrument. The upper, higher instruments would normally use a treble clef. The lower instruments, typically a bass clef. Singers, usually women use the treble and men use the bass. But there's some, there's some exceptions to those and we will talk about those in future lessons. So the treble clef is also called a G clef. And the bass clef is also called an F clef clef and we will talk about that in a bit. So let me move these over and next we are going to talk about the notes on the staff and what those notes are called. Music is, the notes in music are labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So the letters of the alphabet up through G. So you've got A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Those are the, the letters of the notes. And if you look over here on this chart, you see that in the treble clef, you have C for the line notes. C is below the staff. So remember, this is called a staff. This is below the staff. E is the first line. G is the second line. B third line, D, fourth line, and F is the fifth line. Now what we usually do in music is use a mnemonic device to try to remember what the lines of the treble clef are. So here's an example of one that you can use. Every good boy deserves fudge. You can also just do it with a chant, E-G-B-D-F, E-G-B-D-F. Those are the lines of the treble clef. So however helps you, but use a device to help you remember because the bass clef lines are different. So every good boy deserves fudge. Remember we start at the bottom and go up. Those are the lines of the treble clef. And then the spaces of the treble clef actually spell a word. Face, F-A-C-E. Face. So that one's easy to remember. Then for the bass clef, you've got G, B, D, F, A. Great big dogs fight animals. That's the way I learned it. 
And the spaces are A, C, E, G, all cows eat grass. So remember what I said after you watch this video once, go back and take notes. So you'll want to write those down and you will want to practice over and over learning these because the quicker you can identify the note name of the treble and bass clefs, the quicker and easier everything else in music theory will be. Everything we will get to hinges on knowing this. This is very basic, and so we are going to practice it some more now with my bigger, here we go, with my bigger staff here. This staff is actually called a grand staff because it doesn't just have the five lines. It has five lines and another five lines that are connected together. And I wish I would have left a little space over here to draw the brace. You would see a brace which looks like this. That would be at the beginning of the grand staff. So you've got your five lines up here and your five lines down there and you'd see this brace here. So I will show you that in a future video. But just so you know, this is called the grand staff. And it's the type of staff you would see if you were playing piano. And usually the right hand would play the upper notes here and the left hand the lower notes. You would also see this if you were singing in a choir and you're seeing everyone's parts. And soprano and alto would be here, tenor and bass here, especially like in a hymnal in that type of a song. So this is a grand staff. So let's take a few minutes to go through how the notes work. I showed you what they were called on that other chart, but I just want to show you that they go in order. So let me get a darker marker here and start on this side. You've got, I'm drawing the line because it's below the staff. This is called a ledger line, spelled L-E-D-G-E-R, ledger line. And I'm going to draw C. Now this C is also called middle C. So let me write that, middle C. Now as you go up from middle C, it goes up in order of the alphabet. So notice I'm drawing a space note, a line note, a space note, a line note, a space note, and they're ovals, a line note. They're not circles, they're ovals. Space note, line note, space note, and line note. So I said this was C, so this one is D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and it will just keep going up like that. And when you get above the staff, you draw some ledger lines. I will show you that in a second. But just to remind you what we learned a minute ago, the lines of the treble clef were E, G, B, D, F. You see that? And we said that the space notes spelled a word. Remember that word? Face, F, A, C, E. One thing I love about music theory is that there are so many patterns. There's so many, um, just, well, patterns, really. And we are going to see this all throughout music theory. And it makes it easy to remember things. Kind of like with math, too. If you forget, if you could at least get middle C again, you could count up to see what the next note is. So let me give you an example. Say you had this note here, and I said, what is that note? Right here, it's on the fourth line of the treble clef. What note is that? And you can't remember your 
great every good boy deserves fudge you couldn't remember so if you remembered that middle C was down here you could just go up in order C D E F G A B C D and there you've got the answer this one is D next I'm going to show you what the ledger lines are like so we have the note up here, which is F, and then you can keep going up, G, and then you have to draw a line. And then that would be A. And you draw the line again, and that would be B. You see how that works? It just all keeps going up, just in order. Now the same thing happens in the bass clef that we just did in the treble clef. I want to show you that middle C stays the same for the bass clef. Normally in a staff this would be a little closer so that the C would be right in between. But it's not on this particular uh, drawing. That's okay. We'll just draw it again here. So this is C. This is the same C as this. Middle C. And you're going down. So you're going backwards in the alphabet. C, B, A, G. You see how that works? And it will be exactly what we talked about before with the notes. Let me draw. There we go. And I'll put this one here. Okay, so we've got great big dogs fight animals for the line notes of the bass clef. And we have all cows eat grass for the spaces of the bass note clef. Base clef, I meant to say. And then um, obviously A is here, so this space above is a B and C, middle C there. You see how that works? There's only one more thing, well actually two things left I want to show you today and we'll be done with our very first music theory lesson. I told you that the, the bass clef is sometimes called an F clef and the treble clef is sometimes called a G clef and this is why. You see where this dot is, this circle? that you draw right there for the, for the beginning part of drawing a bass clef. This is F. So that's why they call it an F clef. And here, do you see how this part of the treble clef is circling this line? That is G. So that's why treble clef is sometimes called a G clef. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you is what an accidental is. And I think we'll get to the piano keyboard next time. I think we've given enough for this very first lesson. And next time I will show you how the piano keyboard relates to the notes on the staff. So accidentals are called sharp, flat, and natural. Now later on we will learn about key signatures and how in a key signature to get a particular type of scale to sound the right way you have to use sharps or flats in the key signature. A sharp looks like this and it's drawn straight down but with angles up like that. These go angled up. Kind of looks like a hashtag sign except these are angled up. A flat is not exactly a B, but this part looks more like a half of a heart. So if you were drawing a heart, you see how it's shaped like that. That's what a flat looks like. And then the natural, these are angled up and it goes down like that. So practice drawing these and uh, let me tell you real fast what they mean. The sharp makes the note go up a half step the flat makes the note go down a half step. So think of it this way. If you sat on something sharp, you'd go up because it hurt you. 
if you got a flat tire, it makes your car go down. So that's how you can remember the difference. And then a natural cancels out the sharp or the flat. That is your first music theory lesson. I am going to post um, some printables below so you can practice what you've learned. And I'd love to know what you think. Head over to the membership and join us because we will have the entire course there. I'm hoping to have it all done and recorded within a year. So I'm doing it lesson by lesson. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye, everybody.